Good morning, everyone. I pray we had a wonderful night's rest and we are basking in the joy of the presence of God. I'm Andrew Francis, and it is my task this morning to share the morning nugget. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for life itself. We thank you for your many blessings, and we thank you for this opportunity that we have to open your words. I pray that you'll bless us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit and that you'll enlighten our presence and empower us as we face the day ahead. Through your dear son's name, amen. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 13, readings of verses 8 to 12. Reading from the New King James Version, it reads, So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, then I'll go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered and everywhere before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as far as you go towards Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent as far as Sodom. It's always nice reading through the stories in the book of Genesis. Recently, as I was reading, I was struck anew by the story of Lot. And I thought to myself that there are some powerful lessons that we could learn from Lot's story. This morning, I want to try to share with us just three of those lessons. The first point I want to share with us is that not everything that looks good is good. In Genesis chapter 13, we read that the plains of Jordan were lush and well watered everywhere. They were likened unto the garden of God. And so Lot was drawn in by the lush vegetation that were on the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. We know the story very well, and we know that what looked so pleasant and appealing to the eyes were not really appealing. In verse 12, we're told that Sodom was wicked. So there are so many times in our existences that we are pulled towards things. They look pleasant and appealing to our eyes. They look so nice to us, but they're actually dangerous and they're not good for us. And in the end, we find that we're doomed to destruction because of our associations with these things. Not all that glitters is gold. That is a popular saying that is all too often true in our existence. And what we need to do as Christians is that we need to consult God. Lot didn't stop to think about whether he should go to the plains of Sodom. He was just pulled in by appearances. And too often we are pulled in by appearances and drawn away because of what seems good. So my first takeaway for us is not everything that looks good is good. We should always turn to God and ask God for direction and seek him for guidance before we make any decisions. Now, my second point is that we need to maintain our connections. You see, so lots, sorry, lots herdsmen were fighting against Abraham's herdsmen because they had so much cattle and so many possessions so it was a struggle for both of them to exist together but the catch 21 is that lot thought 
that those things that he possessed, he possessed because he had skilled herdsmen or because of any intrinsic properties that he himself had. He did not realize that all those things that he had, he had by virtue of his connection with Abraham. He was blessed by association. We at times think that the things that we've earned, quote unquote, the things that we possess, things that we boast about, we have those things because of intrinsic properties that we have. But we don't realize that we are blessed because of our association. We're blessed because of our association with God. And God has lavished his blessings upon us. We're blessed because of our association with other godly persons and because of their prayers and because of God blessing us because of them, we have things in our lives. And we stop and we think that these blessings are because of us. And so we lose our connection. We lose our connection with the divine and we lose our connection to persons who are connected with the divine. And we find ourselves in a similar position like Lot. Lot went through so many things. He was captured and his possessions taken away and Abraham had to come and rescue him. We find that in Genesis 14. And then in chapter 19, we found that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed and with it, all of Lot's possessions. Pause and think a while. Lot went into Sodom full and he came out empty. I want to pause and think about it a little bit deeper. We realize that Abraham must have thought that, hey, my nephew is down in Sodom. So God must be able to find 10 persons. He had children and the children had spouses and he had a wife. So 10 righteous persons must be able to be found. In the end, only four persons were rescued from Sodom and only three persons survived the rescue. That is the danger of losing your connection. When we lose our connection with God, we start down a slippery slope and we continue down that slope unless we stop that drifting that we are going through. And we need to ensure that we maintain our connection. Because when we maintain our connection with God, we are kept secure and we stop relying on ourselves and our own strength. And instead we realize that all that we have and are comes from God and God is a source of our strength and our hope. And my final thing that I want us to take away from Lot's story is that sometimes God has to compel us. Genesis chapter 19 verse 16 tells us that Lot lingered and he had to be pulled out of himself and his wife and his daughter had to be pulled out of the city. There are some times that God sees us in danger and he has to pull us out of those situations. Sometimes when we are downhearted and we're disappointed, God is actually rescuing us from trying circumstances, situations that will destroy us and destroy our property, just like Sodom and Gomorrah were burnt in with fire. God is trying to rescue us and in rescuing us, he has to compel us to get out of some situations. That thing that you so desperately wanted that God blocked, God blocked it because he knows that that thing would have led to your destruction. God wants what is best for us. And I want us this morning to be mindful of the fact that we can always rely on God. We could always trust God. You see, Abraham did not choose, did not get, because he allowed Lot to choose first. He did not get the nicest looking land. 
but he ended up better off than Lot because he was connected to God. When we maintain our connection with God, we have the assurance that regardless of what we face, we could have blessings and victories and deliverances because with God, we are victorious. With God, one is majority. And with God and our connection with God, we have the assurance of hope. We have the assurance of a life more abundant. Let us continue to trust God. Let us not be drawn aside by the things that look to be glittering that are pulling us away from our connection with God. God wants a real relationship with each one of us. Today, I'm encouraging us to keep that connection alive and allow God to do all of the things that he longs to do in our lives and to use us how he longs to use us. He has no hands but ours. He has no feet but ours. He has no mouth but ours. May we purpose in our hearts that will make ourselves available to God so that we will not be caught up with the things of this world, but we will purpose to always be used by him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we go through today, we place ourselves into your hands and ask that you will use us for your glory. Continue to bless us, continue to lead us and direct us, dear God. We put ourselves into your hands and ask you, dear Father, to give us some divine appointments today and use us to glorify you. To your dear son's name, amen.